Okay, I want to talk about a little bit how to recognize what a backloaded works message is because no matter how much it seems like we've talked about this this last year and a half, and Greg Jackson, I think, is one of the best people who talks about this because uh, he, he makes it real simple. I tend to be a little more complex. I, I don't try to be complex. It's just my mind. I have ADD and I'm all over the place and, you know, but whatever. A backloaded. There's front-loading and back-loading works. Front-loading says you're not saved by believing in justification by faith, by believing the gospel alone. You're just not saved by that. That's a straight-out, right-up-front, denying the gospel and saying you have to keep the Ten Commandments in order to be saved. And you can't even know if you're... Yeah, I mean, just that's it. That's front-loading works. How does one get saved? You could say, well, keeping the sacraments or going to church or keeping the Ten Commandments, anything but the gospel, okay? That's called front-loaded works. Gospel doesn't even come up. <laughs> Back-loading works is when you say, yes, believe the gospel, and it is by faith, uh, you were saved through, uh, by grace through faith, right? In, and we believe the gospel. But a backloaded works, here's the subtlety, is when you say, how do I know I'm saved? Okay? And instead of looking to the fact that you believe the testimony of Jesus Christ, you believe the gospel, you look to something else yourself and your works so the works backloader speaks out of both sides of his mouth and will never admit usually will not admit that he's backloading works he will insist that he's preaching the gospel and that salvation comes through believing the gospel but then on the other hand he will say but you can't say that you believe the gospel and are saved unless you have a change of life. If you really have the Holy Spirit, if you're really born of God, then you will walk in newness of life. You will have a different kind of attitude. You won't be like the world. If you are like the world, and if, you're, if you don't exhibit the changes that I'm asking to see, then that means that either... You don't believe the gospel, really. Well, what they'll say is you don't really believe the gospel. You don't really believe. And you say, no, I do believe. I believe that Jesus died for my sins and rose from the dead for my justification. I, can't, I cannot shake that. I know it's true. Yes, but you uh, do not meet the requirements. You're not walking in the Spirit. You still look like the world. Therefore you must not actually believe. But I do believe. No, believing is not just. And here's where they get start defining faith. They start redefining faith and saying believing is not just. Believing facts with your mind, you got to believe with your whole heart. Well, what does that look like? Well, it leads to a surrendered life. It leads to a change of life. You can't say you're saved without a life change. And, and then you ask them, well, how much change do I need to have to know whether I really believe? They can't define that. But eventually it'll get back to the commandments. Well, you got to love God with all your heart, you know. you got to love people. as you're... And they'll just list random things, you know. But the point is that then when you say, hey, your backloading works and you're changing the gospel, they say, no, I'm not. It's by grace through faith. I've always said that. But the thing is, is they've got a different definition of what faith is. Faith is not simply believing what God has said about his son is true concerning the death for my sins and the resurrection and I've come to the conclusion that there is no hope for me except the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son. And I've come to the conclusion that I can only have peace with God through the blood of Jesus Christ.
regardless of what my life looks like, regardless of how weak I am, regardless if I got bound up in some kind of addiction, regardless if I got in some kind of weird relationship where they manipulated me to the point where I became a people pleaser and found myself going down a whole path of sin because I was in this relationship that I shouldn't have been in, but I didn't have the willpower to get out. And I kept crying out to God for mercy, but it just, I couldn't overcome it. Well, that whole time that happened, I still believed that Jesus died for my sins and rose for my justification. And there were times that I questioned whether or not I was saved. And if I wasn't, uh, if I was saved, why did why couldn't I get out of this situation? Well, God doesn't always give you the deliverance right away. <laughs> Sometimes you need to grow and become more fully assured in your faith. Sometimes you need to bottom out so that you'll see what the flesh is. That's God's discipline. He allows you to actually go through some things. No, he doesn't send temptation your way. Temptation comes when the lust comes and you respond to it and sin comes. A Christian can sin. You know, a Christian can get themselves in a mess that to the point where they look, they no longer look like a Christian. But it doesn't mean they've lost their salvation. Salvation is evidenced by the proper profession. It is not evidenced by changed life. A, cha a Buddhist can change their life. Now, I'm not saying that being, being healthy as a believer doesn't issue in a changed life, but you can be a believer and be unhealthy, malnourished. The reason most people in Christianity are uh, living such worldly lives, the ones that are saved, is not because they have a false profession or a false faith, it's because there's absolutely zero teaching on how our death with Christ works, what it means to walk in the Spirit, how to preach the gospel to yourself, how to know you're saved. You know, the foundation is assurance of salvation, and from that comes the fruit and comes the peace and the joy. And if you don't have assurance of salvation doesn't mean you're not saved. It means you're not being taught right, and you're not being fed, and you're starving, and you're being beaten. And so that's what Christianity is, is it is a band of thieves and robbers that's setting on God's sheep and beating them to death. And then when they're lying there bleeding, they say, you need to get up and work because I don't think you're really saved. And you're like, I can't. I'm so weak. Why am I so weak? The reason you're weak is because you've been listening to teachings that rob you of your assurance and you're totally malnourished. Growth in the Christian life, strength in the Christian life, walking successfully as a Christian, overcoming victory is a matter of nourishment. Jesus said, if you don't eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. We need to get his life into our soul and that is a matter of nourishment. And nourishment comes through teaching and, and proper rightly dividing the word and opening up the word so that I can see Christ and see my position in him. And I'm sorry, that is not available in Christianity. So it's disgusting when Christians look at Christianity and instead of blaming the system and identifying the system as the problem, they look at the people and say, none of you are saved. You know, and then they change the definition of faith called backloading to exclude as many people as they can. Uh, and they think that their gospel message of you need to find out if you're really a Christian or if you're just a fake. They think that's a gospel message. That's not a gospel message. If you're living in a situation where you feel like you are defeated and you can't break any of your patterns, and you've been malnourished, and you've got zero assurance, what you need, and you're saved, what you need is somebody to come alongside and say, okay, you need to know that you're saved. Once you know you're saved, and you're confident in it, then you can start to walk it out. But these uh, backloaders want you to walk it out to prove you're saved. No, you prove you're saved by looking at what you believe. I know I'm saved because I have the profession, no matter what my condition is. Because that profession is the witness of the Spirit. 
The belief that Jesus is the Son of God and the Christ and that he shed his blood for my sins and rose from the dead, that is borne witness by the Spirit, and whoever believes it is born of God, regardless of their condition. We have a position in Christ independent of our condition. And until we understand our position, we'll never be healthy in our condition. And what people come along and do is they undermine your sense of your position, collapse your condition, and then beat you and tell you, hey, your condition is so bad, you probably were never saved to begin with, you know? It's disgusting. Uh, nobody should be amening any messages like that. Um, so I just wanted to lay that out there. What is backloading works? It, it's not saying uh, it's wrong to do things for God. Uh, you know, some people say that Dave is saying it's wrong to do things for God because that's backloading works. No, backloading works is when you look to something other than Christ and the testimony of Christ um, as evidence that you're saved. Period. All right. Talk to you later.